hello 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 welcome everyone it is once again wednesday you all know what that means it is time for dungeons and dragons welcome fox hainhurst you made it just in time welcome welcome i am your anything but humble dungeon master ignatius torlin and with me are my wonderful players hello players how are you doing on this wonderful day hello DM. Chirp. Chirp, chirp, indeed. Okay, sorry. There was an update, and things look a lot prettier now, but I do have to readjust all of the... Uh, all of the positionings of all the windows for the stream, but that's okay. I hope everyone is doing well. I hope everyone is staying safe from any... Uh, Storms coming in from the sea, depending on where you're located. If you're from the east or the west, it brings us all together. Nature. Mm. And speaking of nature, you want to know where there's a bunch of nature? In the northern wastes. Is there? In the shitty nature, though, right? It, it, yeah, but it's still still nature <laughs> it is a nature mm -hmm. there happen to be some uh, kind of crazy stuff here and there though there was indeed some crazy stuff sirenscape is taking a sweet time loading that's okay so last time our heroes Is this playing? Okay, yeah, it's playing. Last time, our heroes found themselves at <clears throat> Valkenreth, where they were to meet with Dalimar. Unfortunately, Dalimar was not there, but what was there was a bunch of ghosts. And Valkenreth itself was somehow transported halfway between this realm and the Shadowfell. Our heroes met with a ghost who was the caretaker of this... Mm, would you call it a mausoleum? Like, it's a big tower. There's a whole bunch of dead people in it. He was the caretaker. Tower for sure. Caretaker of the mausoleum tower in life. And in have death he was just wanting to get it back to its normal existence originally there was a portal that led to the feywild however due to shenanigans i'll just say shenanigans <clears throat> walking earth ended up halfway between the shadowfell and the prime material plane Buster obtained some life-changing information. He figured out what the heck he actually is. Parangon are not native to Kryn. They are originally from the Feywilds. But he didn't get much more information, because after successfully severing the connection between the Tower and the Shadowfell, they were unable to reconnect it to the Feywilds. Dalimar showed up after their egress from the tower. <clears throat> and thanks to the information that they had obtained from the Blue Phoenix Shrine and what was the other location? The Sunward Fortress. We're able to generally triangulate where the City of Lost Names should exist. Is up here on this peninsula that I have circled. Not peninsula, plateau. However, he also found the location that was emitting a fair bit of magical energy that he wanted to go to. Up near the Cliffs That Drink, which I have also circled here. And he requested... <clears throat> if it was amenable to the party that they escort him up to that location 
he would be in their debt and owe them a favor if they did so. However, he totally understood if they just wished to proceed to their location. Ultimately, they decided that they would make their way to the Dragon Elves and assist uh, Clystron with feeding them, as they had said they would long before. And that is where we are coming back in now. We see the camera come down on them as they are leaving Walkenreth and about to head through the, or make their way to the portal that will lead them back up to Arts Hollow. And so I ask to you all, my lovely players, is there anything specific you want to do? Or do you just want to just head straight there, basically? I'm mm. all for heading straight there. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, Unnatural 20. All right. Hey, hey. People are heading straight there. Let's see. We can move four hexes in a single day of travel. So I don't see the map anymore. Oh, right. I should probably actually share that with everyone. All right. So. <clears throat> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's eight days to get to the golem. Or rather, it's two days to get to the golem. Or one, two, three, four. One day to get up to if you head northeast or northwest, rather. I'm going to assume you want to take the shorter amount of time. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All righty then. What have we got going on today in your one day's worth of travel? OK, so you spend your day traveling. Dalimar is a kind companion. You know, he's not causing any trouble or anything. He seems pretty chill. Doesn't cause any troubles. You know, he pitches in for the gas money. Shares his snacks. Nice. Hmm. Doesn't complain about music. Exactly. He's he's totally fine with whatever uh, stripe he puts on the on the ox cable. <laughs> And you make it to Hearts Hollow without any real issues. Uh, you seek out Clystron, and uh, he greets you fondly, and he says, I totally forget what voice I gave him. He says, oh, That's great to see y'all. Uh, apparently, you decided to bring your old, uh, your old village with you something before, right? You tried to give him a, an Irish accent, and now I think you've gone to South African. I was going Australian, but no, the one who is Irish is Dalimar. Oh, right. Um, oh, yeah. Who am I, I don't remember the, the other guy. It's been a while. It's been a while. This is just going to be my terrible Australian. And... Uh, <clears throat> been moving around a lot in the wastes out here. Exactly. He uh, yeah. he actually gestures, and you can see some like bivouac camps and stuff just outside of Hearts Hollow itself. And the army has made its way to this location, as you had asked them to do previously. So if you wanted to check in with. Uh, anyone there you could, or if you just want to take Clystron and make your way to to the Dragon Elves, you can. Yeah, let's do it. They're probably starving. Right. Well, they are Apex Predators, so. Well, maybe not Apex, but they are Predators. Okay, so we made our way here. And it's going to be one, two, three, four. So it'll take another day's worth of travel since you are all good. So day's worth of travel there, day's worth of travel back.
Okay, so you make it over to the Dragon Elf Spire without any issues. Again, Kleistrin is pretty good as a traveling companion. And what you see is a tall spire that seems like it's just been kind of weathered by the wind and the rain and the wash. The formations are pretty common in the wastes. And with Kleistron here, he just says, Oh, wait just a minute there, folks. I'll be right back. He takes some dried jerky out of his pouch, out of his backpack, rather, and lays it out in, like, a specific location. There's kind of like a little mound of rock. And... Then he just kind of heads on back and waits at y'all and says, uh, just give him a little bit of spice, if you don't mind. <clears throat> y'all sit back a bit, and you can see that there's 12, like, wasteland dragon elves that are just swirling above overhead. They kind of come down and perch atop the spire, and then make their way down to the uh, laid-out jerky. And just go to town. Like, they are... So happy. <laughs> a natural 20 says Kleistrian is a kangaroo. If, if only. It would be very nice if he was. I to make that decision. I'm pretty sure his <laughs> thing actually says he is a human. I don't think there's a kangaroo race, actually. Oh. Right. Some Tragic. God you are. I'm not a god, I'm a game master. Same difference? I mean, it's above above gods. He's got a good point. Oh. But then the authors are above me. Uh, anyways, uh, the Dragon Elves... Above all. <laughs> they take about an hour to... Uh, they take about an hour to finish up their whole thing, and then you're good to go. Uh, we are playing 5th edition. This is uh, Shadow of the Dragon Queen, remade for the 5th edition. Okay, cool. Now... <clears throat> Your way to this spire was uneventful. However, on the return trip, we come across a group of Dragon Army soldiers. You come across a Dragon Army patrol. You've got some options. You could attack them. You could try and sneak around them. I guess those are the only two options I can think of off the top of my head. If you have any ideas, feel free to tell me. <clears throat> uh, maybe we should try to hide and watch them go by to see what's going on with them moving around. Are they moving or is it just a camp? Are they camped? Um, it, I have it in my head that the, you are currently... Uh, marching in the evening, so they are kind of camped up. Okay, uh, maybe we scout it then. Um, we're traveling with quiet. like a civilian. We should try right. to avoid confrontation if possible. Right, yeah. And if we can get around them, just do that. All right, then I'll need a group stealth check from everybody. I do have Pass Without Trace as well. All right, if you want to use Pass Without Trace, that gives everyone a plus 10 on their stealth. Okay. Yeah, I'll do that. Excellent. Go ahead. Click that. All right. 
Okay, so the lowest anyone got was a 21. Pretty sure that's going to be fine considering who's on watch, but you never know. Yeah, Landrin is lanky. <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> full disclosure, I did just roll a one on the perception check. Y'all are fine. You sneak right in path without any issues. Neat. <laughs> hey, I like it. And you have made it back to Hearts Hollow. Uh, and that'll be a long rest, I'm sure, because it's been several days of travel. And your next goal is uh, heading up to the cliffs that drink. Um, that's the uh, right circle. That is correct. The right circle. Okay. Uh, while we're back here in town, I'm going to replenish my crossbow ammo. Oh, yeah, I, I have, honestly have not been keeping track of your bolts or anything. Just I've just been assuming that you just have yeah. get them back. I think generally, yeah, we also replenish like adventuring gear and rope and things that we've used lately. So does that cost maybe a few gold or something? No, at least that doesn't even cost you anything. Like I, nice. I'm literally just assuming that you haven't cut the rope apart, so it's not lost. You haven't left it behind. True. Yeah. It made out pretty well. Uh, but if you did want to purchase anything like you know some healing potions or some of the uh, previously loved gear that the uh, owner of the shop in town has, you are more than welcome to do so. A poisoner's kit? A poisoner's kit. Yeah, yeah, I'll say he's got a poisoner's kit. Let me see how much a Poisoner's Kiss got. Okay, a Poisoner's Kit, or the scrumbled together requirements for a Poisoner's Kit, costs 50 gold pieces. All right. Do you have proficiency in the Poisoner's Kit? I don't have a proficiency, but that would just add, like, the proficiency bonus to that, right? Yes, yes, that is true. I can still make them without. Yeah. I don't know what proficiency would... It's literally, uh, with... Uh, rather, it's literally proficiency with that tool kit. I probably don't, but I still wanted to get one. Yeah. <clears throat> I would like to see if I could get uh, maybe some new leather armor or just whatever's available right now. I don't know. Um, We can probably swing that, but let's just have a look and see what kind of armor you currently have on. Yes. Um, just have regular leather armor on. You've got hide armor on, it looks like. Hide, yes. Even if I could just have it enchanted or something like that, well, it would give me a little more defense. Not going to be able to get anything enchanted in this location. Shucks. Let's see. Hide armor is medium armor, so that's 12 plus your dexterity modifier to a maximum of 2. Yeah. Hide armor is actually the best armor that you can get unless your dexterity modifier is higher than a plus two, which I don't think it is for you. No, it's... It is two, I believe. Yes. Yeah. It's just two. Mm -hmm. 
<clears throat> yeah. So if, I, if that increases on the next uh, certain level increase, and st- then I could go a little uh, for a different round of armor. Yeah, you you could. Uh, so <clears throat> here's the thing: you are a druid, which means you don't accept anything that has metal in it. Yeah, there is that. You are unable to do anything with metal in it. So that means you can't that use... automatically disqualifies a whole bunch. You can't even use Wouldn't studded leather because it uses uh, metal rivets. Yes, that's true. Even even chained together uh, non-metallic ones would still have that. So yeah, you're right. It's it's kind of at its limit anyway. That's good to know, though. Mm-hmm. Because, uh, yeah, yeah, so you, you've got... Decisions easier. You've got hide armor. And that's the best that you're going to get for your your class specifically yeah all right then so there's that okay and was there anything else anyone wanted to purchase while in town um no i'm good all righty then We are going to make our way up north. That's a long rest. So, it's the combat tracker. Everyone has a nice long rest. And we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So, it's going to be two days of travel again. Do we have anybody with us this time? Uh, you, you still have Dalimar with you. Okay. So, um, after your first day of travel, partway through the day, about noon, uh, you do have an encounter. You come across three giant scorpions. Ooh. Yes. And so Ooh. that that that's going to be... Uh, that's going to be combat. Everyone, please roll initiative. Nope. We must theater of the mind this again, unfortunately. Okay. All right, so top of the order is gonna be stripey there's three giant scorpions and they're kind of all clustered around a carcass of some sort but they have spotted you and you are the first one to act what would you like to do okay uh i I mean i would rather not fight them at all so uh combat is is forced yes however um i still have ways of achieving my goal uh uh so you know i will try to make them uh confused and calm down um uh, yeah that's hypnotic pattern Ooh, good, good, good. Uh, what's the save uh, for hypnotic pattern? Wisdom 14. Then they're incapacitated. Uh, play some hippie music like they're on shrooms. Well, I've got some good news for you. Wisdom is not the strong point of a scorpion. I bet. <laughs> Hi, Erwin. Thank you for the resub. Excellent to see you. Okay, so one, two, three. Okay, so the giant scorpions all fail their saving throws. 
and have been uh, immobilized due to hypnotic pattern. How long does hypnotic pattern last? That's a great question. <laughs> well, this is a good start. Oh my god. I always click the wrong things in this program. <clears throat> uh, concentration up to one minute. Okay, so th you've got them for like a minute as they are right there, so you can't really scurry all that far in one minute. All right. So, what do, what do you guys want to do with these things now? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Basically, so they all three are incapacitated. Uh. Damn. Can we magic? Uh, I guess. Eggshell. Can we? No. If we want to just go through regular combat order, eggshell's up next, and he can smack one and get an auto crit because that's what incapacitated means. Yeah, yeah, but couldn't we just, like, harvest their venom glands and leave them? As I said, it lasts for one minute. And also, it, when you do damage to them after hypnotic pattern, I'm pretty sure they wake up. Oh. Um... Master killed. Huh. How is your, um... Scorpion language? <laughs> Call back to the spiders. I don't know. Should we? Um... Sp <laughs> Kill can talk to anybody. It's yeah. true. Kill does have speak with animals. Um. Yeah. What? Uh. Ah. Oh, crap. Um. Well, you know what? I'm gonna. I'm gonna do bless. I'm gonna bless. Um. The party, like gonna bless kill uh buster and landron kill B buster and landron that's three right yeah all right they have all been blessed that is your action um doing a pacifist run today apparently <laughs> um and you can win without a fight yeah right so, um question if yeah um so my dancing long sword mm -hmm. if i throw it like it, it only attacks like if i command it right um like it's not gonna do it on its own that's a very good question let me double check dancing long sword uh, you use your bonus action toss it in the air speak the command word when you right. do so, the sword hovers, flies up to 30 feet, and attacks one creature of your choice. So you okay. do have to attack when you first throw it up into the air. Mm -hmm. Like, the first bonus action has to be an attack. Oh, uh, right. okay. But then afterwards, uh, the sword will continue to hover until you choose your bonus action to attack something else. Right, okay, so, like, I can't just, like, throw it, throw it in the air as a, a bonus action. I would have to attack, right? Yes. Okay. All right. Well, that's that's going to be my turn. All right, then. Sc Giant Scorpion 1, 2, and 3 are all incapacitated. Kill, be your next. Hmm. Well, so we're not attacking them, and they're incapacitated, so can they even talk? No, they are incapacitated. They can't do fuck nor shit. Oh, okay. So, like, talking to them is kind of useless for me right now. <laughs> yeah. What does this do? Everyone's taking the time to look at all their non-combat things they have never used before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's cool, but kind of useless. I was reading Beast Sense. I'm like, I don't want to get. I mean, I'd only be able to look through its eyes for a minute. <laughs> He'll see a hypnotic pattern. Yeah, <laughs> that too. Yeah. I'll just fall underneath uh, a stripey spell. 
Uh, uh, the thing about Beast Sense is I believe you can just continue to concentrate and still see through it for a longer period of time, but it takes your entire action to do it. So like in hypothetical, you could be sent through a rat and see what the rat sees for an extended period of time until your concentration is broken or it leaves the area effect or what have you. Man, what's with rangers and needing concentration for everything? Uh, they are half casters. And also most oh. of the air quotes best spells are concentration spells. Warlocks have the same issue. I don't know, am I the first one to draw blood? Might as well. There's this guy looking yeah. around everybody. Yeah. He would be. Go for it. Uh, okay. I, yeah, we'll, we'll do. We'll target Giant Scorpion 1 then. All right then. That is an automatic critical. Cool. So if you want to do any extra damage, make sure you do your special shit beforehand. Yes, I mean, I'll do Hunter's Mark with it. Excellent, excellent. And just make sure you roll damage with critical, uh, like, automatically set. That's under effects. And where are effects at? It's the plus or minus under the tools on the very top. Under modifiers, rather. I'm turning on what again? Critical. That way it just will roll the critical damage automatically. I'm not seeing that. You see the plus and minus under modifiers? It's not effects. Pardon me. It is under modifiers. Oh, I was looking under effects. Sorry. All right. Yeah, nah, there's critical. I have clicked it. Excellent. Now roll damage. Wonderful. Uh, you almost immediately bloody it with a single shot. Uh, it is no longer incapacitated, so your next attack is going to have to be a roll to hit. Okay. Unless you hit one of the other three. Nah, I'm right. I'll, I'll uh... Take one at a time. One at a time, time. Yeah. yeah. Am I okay? Nope. I'm sorry. That's damage. I'm sorry. No, that wasn't. You added a plus four to your D because of uh, bless. Oh. Okay. A uh, twenty-five is gonna definitely hit. So please roll your second damage. Smart. Yeah. We are not doing critical. All right. Heavily damaged. You have a third attack with your, uh... Dread Ambusher. Dread Ambusher, that's what it was. 27 is a hit, absolutely. Nice. 15 points of damage. <laughs> and you have killed it. Hey. So, See, Kill yeah. looks around as everyone else not doing anything, and you're just like, okay then. And just fires. Re re rapid shot. One, two, three. And the arrows sink into the scorpion, and its dreadful icor splits across the floor, and it falls to the ground. And that is your turn, then. Assuming you don't want to move at all. No, I'm okay. Alrighty. Buster! Hi. Hi, it's your turn. Yeah, it is. Uh, I'll go for Giant Scorpion 2. Excellent. Auto crit. Uh, you're not doing any of your maneuvers? 
Not on that one. Okay. Okay, and then I'm gonna do follow up attack on number two. Yeah. Fifteen. How's that do? That's a hit. Okay, and uh, this one is a fainting attack. Excellent, excellent. Some more damage. And you using the bonus action to smack with the back end? Uh, no, I'm going to pop my action surge. Ah, I see. And hit it again. With advantage. 27 absolutely hits. Going to do another fainting attack? No. <laughs> All right. Uh, you have one more attack from your action surge. Thirty. That one misses. Actually, it's weird. Ah. No. Uh, go ahead. <laughs> okay. So that's your action. Your uh, action surge. Do you still have a bonus action? It is still up. Oh. Uh. Where is it? There it is. 19 will, in fact, hit. And there you go. Uh, Buster scoops on in and does an absolutely glorious flurry of blows. It's like he's dancing with the wind with that, uh, with that glaive. And finish it off with just smacking down the butt of the, the glaive into its head and crushing the exoskeleton. And you hear like a <laughs> sound. And Landrin, it's your turn now. OK, um, well, the last one's still incapacitated and uh, it's going to get a turn if I attack it and wake it up from what's going on. So I think I should just move around it, probably toward the back and just hold my turn unless well i'll cast shillelagh unless i really need it but that's going to be pretty much my whole turn uh stripey and eggshell both have turns before the scorpion has a turn ah well i can try a thorn whip yeah we'll see what happens yeah thorn whip will auto hit and auto crit so you would just roll damage all right uh let's go Okay, you thorn whip it. Whip it real good and do some damage. Okay. And Squawk is Squawk is next. Yay, Squawk. Squawk. Yeah, Squawk Squawk is yeah, team player. Okay, let's see what we're going to do here, Squawk. Let's roll the hit. That's a 10. That's a miss. Okay, so Squawk runs up and tries to uh, ram it, but unfortunately does not hit and misses. Stripey, your turn now. Okay. Uh, well, I don't want to waste. Uh, I don't want to waste any more mental power on these people, uh, especially with the just about to die. So I'll just shoot. I'll just shoot a thing. You shoot a thing. I will shoot a thing. Uh, yes, crossbow. Do I get advantage? Right. You do not, because it has been, it is no longer incapacitated. Oh, right, because it got hit. All right. 19 will hit it, though, so uh, go ahead. All right. Your bolt strikes true and punches through its chitinous armor. 
that is your action. Any bonus actions you wish to do? Nah, that's it. Okie dokie then. Eggshell, it's your turn. Um... Alright, so... I'm gonna... I'm just gonna run up to that giant scorpion and hit them. All right. With my, with my, just my regular sword. Excellent. Whoop. Oh, shit. Did that count? No. Okay. Eighteen um, will definitely hit. Oh, okay. Um, I will. I will use divine smite. Excellent. All right. Um, will be this one here. All right. Oops. Why did I put that on you? That's incorrect. <laughs> Um, yeah, I guess I get my second one. You do get your second attack. There you go. 15. Let's see here. That's a hit. Excellent. Um, just, uh, just a regular, just a regular attack. Oh, oh no. Uh, well, congratulations. <laughs> it is still up. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> and Scorpion's gonna get you now. Hey, hey, Mr. Scorpion, what what do you do? Scorpion makes three attacks, two with its claws and one with its sting. Huh. All right, then. Attack one on eggshell. Critical miss. Attack two on eggshell. Let's go. That is a hit. Ooh. <laughs> All right, goodbye to Bless, and you have been grappled. Oh, crap. And it's going to sting you now. It unfortunately misses the sting. Unfortunately. Unfortunately. It's because I, I, he tried to uh, sting me in the head, and I 360, you know, turn. <laughs> I will turn my head, you know, like... Phew. Yeah, you 360 turned your, your head around, which means you're facing it <laughs> as it stabs you. But it hit <laughs> but it hits you in the helmet. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> okay, kill kill this your turn. Okay, well I will take some shots. Uh beautiful. And it's <laughs> beautiful. Um, oh wait, no, he's incapacitated. Oh, wait, no, uh Buster's next to it, right? Uh no, Eggshell is right next to it, because Eggshell is grappled by it. Yeah, we're, so I don't get uh, pack tactics. You do get pack tactics. Don't think I do? I mean, I'm not going to argue, but I thought they had to be... My allies did, couldn't be encumbered or whatever it's called. They cannot be incapacitated. Eggshell is grappled. Incapac well then, grappled is does not give you the incapacitated status. It just means your movement is zero. Well then, let's just attack with advantage then. All right, the twenty will absolutely hit. I've got hunter's mark. All right then, that's some good damage. Once more, under the breach with your attack. Oh, a 20. Critical hit. Uh, how do you want to kill it? I want to... Okay, so it's got its tail forward, right? Like it was attacking um, Edge? Yeah. Well, I want to shoot an arrow through the tip of its tail and cause it to puncture its own head with its tail. Oh, so you you want to do like a trick shot? Like you, you, your arrow doesn't even necessarily pierce into it, but like just r as it's striking, the force of your arrow makes it just go like down into its own head. I, I, I'm just like I'm just like nailing its own 
<laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's you, a tail spike into its head. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. I love it. Uh, the arrow flies, or you have Buster throw you up in the air so you have uh, the correct location. I just want to see how much damage it does. Yeah, go ahead. All right, not eleven. That's not that great. Actually, <laughs> it's not that great damage, but it was a good trick shot, and it's dead. Uh, congratulations, everybody. Uh, you want to know something that I've just realized? I haven't had you all level up yet. <laughs> when were we supposed to do that? Uh, specifically, it says at GM discretion, but some suggestions are uh, when you, if you saved the uh, bronze thing, the bronze egg, and oh, returned it. Uh, once you've gone through all three locations uh, in the wastes. <laughs> Scorpion holding me like Hamburgar. <laughs> yeah. The things, the things that you, you, you chuckle fucks put in the discord that no one else can see. <laughs> you need to you need to stream the discourse <laughs> at the same time. Absolutely not. That's a terrible idea. I'm using I'm using <laughs> both of my monitors strictly for gameplay purposes, and I have no space. Uh, anyways, um, y'all want to be level seven? Yes, please. Everyone, you get yes. to be level seven. Neat. It's lucky number seven. I think I remember how to level up. Uh, you you take your thing and you drag it onto your thing. That's yeah. very descript. Yeah, that, that that that's how it works with me. I need to find which handbook has red ambusher. That's probably in Tasha's. Uh, no, Gloomstalker is in Xanathar's. So you get a new thing from being a full Gloomstalker. I just forget which thing I'm pulling the bard stuff from. Ooh. So... Killed. At the seventh level, you have honed your ability to resist the mind-altering powers of your prey. You gain proficiency in wisdom saving throws. If you already had those, you gain proficiency in intelligence or charisma. Uh, but you didn't, so you just have proficiency in it. Now I'm going to put that... There you go. Ooh. Sacred oath feature. Okay, there we go. Iron Mind. Mm-hmm. Okay, Sacred Oath feature for the Glory Paladin. Let's see what that is. Aura of Alacrity. At 7th level, you emanate an aura that fills you and your companions with supernatural speed, allowing you to race across the battlefield in formation. Your walking speed increases by 10 feet. In addition, if you aren't incapacitated, the walking speed of any ally who starts their turn within five feet of you increases by ten feet until the end of that turn. Oh, damn. So... That's all Always? Yes, your walking speed is 40. Whoa. That's cool. Uh, da -da -da -da. We just got raided. We got raided? Incredible! <laughs> Welcome, Senny. Thank you for the raid. You have just joined us as we are leveling up our characters, as I forgot to do that earlier. All right. How do I... Can I just... Yeah, there we go. There we go. Your speed is now plus 10, 240. Now... Buster. At 7th level, you gain a martial archetype feature. You are a battle master. 
So I already got uh, Know mm. Your Enemy. Know Your Enemy. So if you spend a minute observing or interacting with creatures outside of combat, you can learn certain things about its capabilities compared to your own. You get to choose two of the following characteristics. Strength, dexterity, constitution, armor class, current hit points, total class level, and total fighter level. Wow. So that's actually kind of neat. You can, like, do, like, an out-of-combat scan on things. That's neat. And what else have we got going for us here? Druid. Wait, wait. Oh, damn, I didn't know that. Uh, I can I can regain spell slots. That's that's kind of crazy. OK. Uh, I, ass or... I assume so. Oh, it says optional. Harness divine power. Oh, so that way, yeah, if you, you want to use your channel divinity to regain spell slots, you can absolutely do that. Damn. Because you only have one channel divinity, so you get to choose. You can either channel divinity to regain some spell slots. You can use channel divinity to grant uh, hit points to your you and your friends, or you can use channel mm -hmm. divinity for uh, inspiring athlete, whatever that is. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so... Uh, Landrin, since you are now level 7, you have a 4th level spell slot. Oh, alright. Very good. Mm-hmm. So there's some cool options in there. There's Dominate Beast, Guardian of Nature, Polymorph. That's always a fun one. Hmm. Yeah, I like the idea of that. Uh, what was the second one? Well, there's, there's a whole lot of them that are available. I was just reading off. One of them is Guardian of Nature. That's the one. What does that do? Uh, a nature spirit answers your call and transforms you into a powerful guardian. It lasts until the spell ends. You choose one of the following forms. Primal Beast or Great Tree. Oh my gosh. If you do Primal Beast, Bestial Fur covers your body, your facial features become feral, and you gain the following benefits. Walking speed increases by 10 feet. You gain dark vision to a range of 120 feet. You make strength-based attack rolls with advantage. And your melee weapon skills deal an extra 1d6 force damage. Uh, if you choose Great Tree instead, you gain uh, 10 temporary hit points. You make constitution saving throws with advantage. You make dexterity and wisdom-based attack rolls with advantage. While you are on the ground, the ground within 15 feet of you is difficult terrain for your enemies. So... Great Tree is super good for you as a caster because yeah. all of your spell attacks are uh, wisdom based. Yeah, and that's like my best my best stat to use for that. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of a toss up with it. I can't prepare it right now anyway. Do I get the spell immediately or is yep. it on my next rest? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it to you. Okay. Because right. this, um, this was me, right? This was me messing things up. Uh, you go. You also get blight, which is a fun one. That's just damage. Yeah, I have a bit of damage. Is I it? Think, um, 8D8 I, I think eight d eight necrotic. Go with the. Uh, yeah, I think I'll go with the you know primal beast form. All right, all right the, then. The three form one. Yeah. Add that to your uh. Add that to your thing, your spell list. I will. Oh. I'm going to my spell list. And a bard. What does the bard get? The bard also uh, gets a new spell known and fourth level spell slots. Ooh, fourth level. Yes, a fourth level spell slot. And I'm just having a look at the Bardic spell list here as well. You got some cool things. There's Charm Monster. There's Dimension Door. Greater Invisibility. Uh, Dimension Door is basically you and a friend uh, move to a location that either you can see or you can visualize or describe by stating a distance and direction. Up 
to a range of 500 feet. Uh, some other things there are hallucinatory terrain, locate creature, phantasmal killer. Rowlotham, Rowlotham's psychic lance. Where is this list? <laughs> oh, uh, I'm I'm looking them up on uh, a wiki on my other monitor because I have no room to open things up without messing up the stream layout. But uh, under character, there's spells. And you can open up the spells thing and be like, I want to see bard spells that are level four. Oh, we don't have access to Ralotham's Psychic Lance, because that's in Fizban's Treasury of Dragons. Loose and notorious terrain, though. But, uh, yeah, you go ahead and pick a spell. I think we've gone through right, everyone's stuff. Out. It'll take me a little bit. I don't want to... Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Way, what? While figuring that out. Yeah, yeah, it's no no problem at all. Uh, anyways, uh, you make your way on your second day of travel to the correct location. I need to give everyone a long rest because you definitely had a rest in that day's worth of travel. And... Um, yes. I just yeah sorry um does it automatically do like the hp like uh max hp increase or whatever it should automatically do that if you have properly dragged your uh class onto your character sheet it should auto level up i i think it did uh yeah i did that so all right excellent i guess it did that ouch you're right. It, yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's that sounded like it hurt. Uh, a little bit. All right. So, Dalimar has been successfully escorted to this location on the cliffs that drink. It seems to be an unassuming inlet along the coast. However, you can see that the cove is lightly obscured by fog that is billowing out from a nearby cave. Not typically a good thing. I don't know. It could be something totally dope. It could be, like, full of dry ice. It's just a party in there. Uh, Dry ice is dangerous. Ice is dangerous. Uh, Buster will take point and head towards the entrance, emitting the stuff. Okay. Inside, you see a wolf-like creature. And I believe this is the same thing that you literally just... Yeah, it's the same kind of creature that you fought in the old tower, an Ankalox. So, if you want to fight it, you're going to have to fight it. Uh, can we ambush it? You're going to have to be a stealth check to ambush it. For all of us? For all of you. Well, you know who can help with that. Yeah. Uh, here's the thing. You didn't oh. do that before you started poking your head in. Well. Everyone stealth, please. <laughs> well. So that's a, that's a four. And uh, the Ankalox does have a perception skill of plus six. That's uh, that's a 12. Your least stealthy members have been spotted. Combat begins, and Dalimar says, oh, I'll give you a hand with this one there, fellas. Please roll initiative. Oh. 
Good on you. He's a neat. He's a neat fella. Not great rolls. Jeez. Could have been better, but that's okay. All right, combat starts with Buster. Once again, with Theater of the Mind, this I apologize that this is not the greatest visual experience. But Buster, you have an Ankalox. Is angry. It has spotted you. What do you wish to do? It's not in the combat tracker. Oh, it is in the combat tracker. It just didn't show up. Because it... There it is. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I am going to swing at it. Uh, 20 is definitely going to hit it. So go ahead and roll damage. Yeah, this is a fainting attack. By the way, for anyone who has forgotten, this is what Dalinar, Dalimar looks like. Okay, so fainting attack does damage. You now have advantage on your next attack. Yeah. Which is coming now. Coming soon to own on DVD and video. Buster's second God, attack. I heard that forever. Uh, 26 will absolutely hit. Yeah, um, this is also a fainting attack. All right, then. That's your two attacks, and now you have a bonus action. Action surge. Okay, action surge. Two more attacks. See another attack. 26 hits. Which is also a fainting attack. You know, if it works, it works, right? Hell yeah. <laughs> We're doing it again. Doing it again. Why didn't it take? I didn't hit the button. You didn't hit the button. Uh, so just roll again. All right. Yeah, that definitely hits. She doing another fainting attack? And again. <laughs> okay. Now is your bonus action. Uh that one. Seventeen. Uh, that is a hit. Good. It's a trip attack. <laughs> oh beautiful. Okay, so what's the save for the trip attack? Uh, it just vanished from my screen. One second. I mean, 15. It's a 15. All right. Uh, I've got some unfortunate news for you. This is a plus six. Yeah. You do not trip the Ankalox. That's How fine. However, what you did was pretty cool. Like, the, the way I picture this in my head with the fainting attack is like, you rushing in and then you just like uh Dragon Ball Z like after image technique or like doing the attack but then the attack hits from slightly to a different location and you just did that four times in a row real fast nah it's I, I kind of saw it more like drunken master slapping him with the glaive <laughs> drunken master slapping with the glaive so like you look like you're going down with a proper chop but then you miss on purpose and smack it with the flat of the blade or something like that yeah that's pretty cool all right 
So that's your action and your bonus action. You use your move to get up to it. You're done. Kill. My turn. It's your turn. Uh, Buster, your very good, important question to have. Were you all the way up close on it or were you using your range? I was up on. Okay, so you were within five feet. So you do have bonus action. Or you, rather, you do have an advantage on your attack. Kill. Okay. So we will do that. I will put a lot of stuff here. Hunter's Mark on him. Hunter's Mark is on him. And I will shoot. 21 will absolutely hit. Please give me that damage. Yeah, I did that. Okay. Okay, second attack time. Fourteen, unfortunately, does not hit. First arrow strikes true, striking it in the arm, but then your second arrow goes wide, unfortunately, but you do still have your dread ambusher. Third attack. Twenty-seven will absolutely hit. Roll that damage. Much better. Oh, the ankle ox roars out in pain as you do fucking 20 points of damage. The beast is being fucked up real good. Uh, Stripey, what do you want to do next? Oh, I, I, uh, I must go say I moved around. a little bit farther away. Oh, yeah. Go, go ahead. Move, move a little farther away, absolutely. Uh, what were you saying there, Stripey? I was in the, um, the, the place where I dragged the, the level up bard thing out, had a thing about bard spells in there, and, uh, it, it did have the one you were talking about. Uh, that looks pretty badass. Oh, Psychic Lance? Uh, yeah. Oh, okay, then. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. You gonna do that? I mean, if it hit, if it gets its save, it doesn't do anything, but if it doesn't get its save, it's, like, totally fucked. <laughs> yeah, that that's what we call a saver suck. Yeah, and, uh, hopefully it doesn't save. Well, you know, it has a plus six to its strength, so it probably is very good at the mental things. Yeah, we need a 14 save against that. That's a seven minus three, which is a four failure. Okay. Okay. So seven D6 psychic damage, and it is incapacitated until the start of your next turn. This thing says 10 D6. Oh, you know what? You probably see the Unearthed Arcana version. Yeah, I think that's probably where I was. That's where I've been dragging out my uh, art stuff from, because that's the one that has the things that you were expecting it to have. That's OK. Like Silver Tongue and stuff. That's not a problem at all. So Rothalum Psychic Lance, probably what the difference is, is this one that is from Fizben's Treasury of Dragons says that it uh, takes half as much damage as isn't incapacitated on a saving throw. So it's just been uh, leveled out a little bit. If you want to keep the Honor Arcana uh, version where uh, it's a save or suck, absolutely. Well, it's the one that's here, so that seems easier to do. All right, then. We'll just stick with that. Um, especially since it didn't save, it, so it's going to suck. Yeah. All right, roll that damage. That's too many ones. That's some pathetic bean damage. <laughs> oh, no. oh my god. <laughs> Hang it's on. Lagged. One, two, three, four, five, six ones. All right. Well, you still did some incredible damage to it, and it is incapacitated until the start of your next turn. So, you know. Uh, it, I just blew my load right into entrance of the cave. <laughs> so, who knows what else is going on down here? But I'm not going to have one of those. <laughs> who knows? Uh, Landrin, you're next. 
Oh, uh, well, I have to... I think I'm just going to try to hit it really hard with some lightning. So... All right, I'm then. I'm going to move away, like, 10 feet mm -hmm. from my current position and then just bring down a call lightning on it. All right, bring down the lightning. Okay. Roll the damage, please. What? 18 points of damage. Um, I need to double check and see if incapacitated means it automatically fails on saving throws. Incapacitated. Look how far. Cannot take actions nor reactions. Uh, so it can technically do a saving throw. Ah. Oh well. Um. Pretty good spot. Uh, yeah, that 18 is definitely gonna, unfortunately, reduce the value of that. But that's okay. You've done some damage. And Dalimar is up next. And uh, what have we got going for you, Dalimar? Mm -hmm. He's kind of at the back with everyone else. Um, what's, what's this got going for it? 20 foot radius, 40 foot high cylinder. Yeah, yeah, to hell with it. He's gonna go ahead and. He's gonna cast Ice Storm. And uh, just making sure that he clips the monster without attacking Buster. Thankfully, there's plentiful room in this cavern. Uh, and then we need a dexterity saving throw from this beast. An 11. Failure. Wonderful. Okay. He casts his spell and he says, It's on the ropes now, lads. Finish it off. Ooh. Yeah. So, is that um, from? Uh, is that from anything? That's just a thing I just said. I don't know. It, it feels like I've, I've heard that in the video game before where like you've almost killed something and then like one of your party members says that like a dragon's dogma thing. I mean, probably. It, it's it's exactly a yeah. thing that someone would say. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyways, eggshell, you get two auto crits. Oof. So you know, like the the, the little uh, beak feathers, you know, they kind of ruffle around, you know, because I smell the stench of uh, undead. Yes, you do. Stench of undead uh, beasts. <laughs> um. So. Why do you still have grappled uh, on? That's my bad. One second. Oh. You've not been grappled for a long time. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I kind of liked it. Um, oh. So, uh, <laughs> so I will definitely just uh, attack it, like swing. Oh, my God. Swing. Swing, baby. Oh. oh. You automatic. Oh. You automatically crit. Like, it, oh. because it's still oh. incapacitated. Oh, okay, You didn't okay. need to roll. Oh shit! Okay, right. Um, oof. All right. So, definitely, I'm gonna do a second level divine smite. Of course. On that beast. Of course. Um. So undead. Uh, like this. Make sure you to give yourself critical hit. Uh, automatic critical. Ooh. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, where is that? Uh, under under tools on the top right hand, there's a plus and minus in modifiers. You open that up, oh, and there's critical. Right. So just add that to yourself and then roll. I just, I just click it? Yeah. Okay. And then... 
Uh, do I add like a, an extra D8 because it's uh, a level two? I keep forgetting. I'm sorry. Uh, you will add an extra D8 because it's a level two. Right. Okay. So, uh, wait. So this here, and then this. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> what uh, is that? Uh, what that is, is that, um, two, da two of the damage is from your, uh, sword. And two of it is from level, from being level two, and then an extra one is from it being, it's an undead creature. And then the other four, because it's doubled. <laughs> uh, so, so, yeah, anyways, um... It just explodes into dust. <laughs> it, it it in fact does explode into dust, and I'm gonna need like a one-liner from you about like glory or goodness or something. Look. Um. Uh, uh wait, wait, wait. Um. Because you all just killed this thing before it got a single turn in combat. <laughs> <laughs> um. Oh crap. I was gonna say I was gonna say something like Judge Dread, but I, I I forget what the line is like. Uh, you've been served or something. <laughs> I don't know, I Justice has been served. Yeah, there you it's go. So bad. Justice has been served. That's a good one, actually. Yeah. I no, wait, wait a second. Hold on. Justice has been burbed. Oh. oh I love it. Hey. Love it. With like a an eagle sound in the background, like. Ah. <laughs> That, I th that, that's a red-tailed hawk, my friend. Oh. Well, it's dead. Yeah, the ankle is dead. It's just like... As it dies. <laughs> it's even more dead. Oh, it's super dead. Oh, here's the cave music. Perfect. Okay, so... The Anklox has been destroyed and rendered to ash by the radiant damage from your holy, your holy bird. Dalimar kind of walks up behind you and pats you on the shoulder and he's like, That was pretty fucking amazing, my good friend. Well done. <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, it was already um, pretty, uh, you know. Pretty, pretty damaged by all the the other folks here. Yeah, uh, Buster's gonna kick the pile of ash twenty feet into the nearest wall of his choosing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna need an athletics check for that to see if you make it twenty feet. Ooh, you only make it 15. I'm sorry. Uh, but yes. Uh, fog is still billowing out from this cave. And... You don't quite know what the source of it is. It's quite dark in here. Um, Dalimar casts a light cantrip to uh, make a... Make a floaty orb. You have a floaty orb, Dalimar casts a light cantrip to make things a bit easier to see, but like the fog is still just like billowing out and causing some obstruction, so there's nothing for it really but to just kind of look into it. Um, unless you want to detect magic, I know Eggshell, you can cast detect magic as a ritual because of your uh, heritage. Because you are a an owlin. Owlkin. They have detect magic yeah. as a racial ability. Hmm. So, okay, right. Um, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. I'll, um, you know, kind of concentrate, I guess, like kneel down a little bit. Okay. So you open your eyes and you kind of do like a 360 like scan around and you're like, Beep, 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 or whatever. Um, right. And you can see in the fog, 
there's like a rounded something or other deeper into the cave as you go and uh, reach it and uh, touch it uh, the fog stops billowing from it and the cave just kind of slowly clears out as the fog uh, vanishes and from your detect magic you can tell that whatever this thing is this uh, rounded piece of broken black glass has an aura of enchantment magic about it Interesting. And uh, mm. when Dalimar sees that you found something, he kind of saunters on up and says, uh, what you find there? Mm. Not exactly sure. It it, uh, it just kind of uh, it was emanating like this 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 magic aura. Um he kind of, you know, puts his hands on his hips and looks at it. He, like, bends over and says, Do you mind if I have a closer look at it? I mean, go be my guest. <laughs> okay. He kind of... Yeah, this is your idea. Uh, he, <laughs> you know, he takes it in his hand. He looks at it, looks around over it. Um, and he says, I'm not, I'm not quite sure what this is, truthfully. It looks like piece of glass hmm mm. uh, anyone else who wants to can make a uh, arcana check nice alright yeah, yeah, yeah. off Ooh, yeah, Landrin. excellent work, Landrin. Uh, Landrin, you get a closer look at it. And with the information that it's um, got some enchantment aura around it, you recognize this to be a shard of something called an orb of dragon kind. Ooh. And just allow me to pull this okay. up. So ages past wizards from the tower of high sorcery came together and worked their greatest magic to forge five orbs of dragon kind also called dragon orbs to help them defeat mm. evil dragons oh damn all right the wizards used the orbs to lure dragons to them and then destroyed the dragons with powerful magic mm. each of the orbs contains the essence of an evil dragon This one is broken. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, but you also know for sure that, uh, like, it's broken. It has absolutely no magical capabilities to it currently. Uh, while it's incomplete or something, because it's just a shard of one? Yeah. Okay. So, it's like a broken snow globe, and the snow that came out of it or the fog in this case was the evil dragon essence so it's worthless ah. not even to sell to a curious collector I guess well we have a curious collector right here hmm that what's your do? offer <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I'd like you all to roll an insight check for me please okay Okay, uh, Stripey, Kilb, both of you, both of you, Stripey and Kilb, uh, and Landrin, uh, kind of put together that, uh, there's absolutely no way Dalimar didn't know exactly kind of what he had. Like, he obviously recognized what this was the second he saw it. Hmm. Right. And, uh, Suspicious. well, he kind of, he kind of laughs a bit as... Uh, Landrin explains to everyone what it was and he's like well so much for uh, hoping to get a good deal out of you for this that's alright though 
I would very much like to have this shard for... Well, I'm not exactly sure what I want to use it for at the moment. But... I really, really want it a lot. Mm. You've done well by me. I'm not going to, you know, fight you to the death for it. Uh, I will point out that it has no use to any of you all. None of it you... It is pretty nifty. It is pretty nifty, but none of you are arcane spellcasters. Also true. Like, he points to Buster... And he says, you're not a spellcaster at all. He points to uh, Eggshell, Landron, and Kilb and says, your powers come from divinities. And he points to Stripey and says, and yours comes from just sheer sexuality, I think. That's how bards work, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you got it. You get right down to it. And, you know, he, he plays around with the shard before he hands it over to you all. Like, he spins it like a pan around his fingers, hands it back to you, and says, As I said, you're not arcane spellcasters. Even if you find the whole, all the pieces for it, and you stick it back together, you're not going to be able to use it to its fullest effect. And that's assuming you can find all the pieces. Yeah. I don't see any harm in just giving it to him. Unless somebody thinks we could use it to our advantage somehow. Well, I don't know. All we would do is maybe sell it to to evil um, bird appropriative lady. Mm. Mm -hmm. bird oh, oh, you mean why, Han? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, why, Han? She's a she's a fun one. That. Yeah. She's a hoot. No. She's, she needs to be cancelled. I mean, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but wait, aren't these, uh, as um, Master Lendron was saying, aren't these used to lure evil dragons so that we can defeat them? Yeah, but none of us knows how mm -hmm. currently. Yeah, and we don't and... have all of it. And we're talking big... about an actual dragon dragon, not a dragonelle. You mean like the the dragon that was uh, uh, kind of uh, pointing out my non-proper yeah. non uniform? Yeah, that mm. one. And made us shit our pants as we ran away. Yeah. Yeah, I'm still mad about that. So, Me too. Uh... You, you came across an actual dragon out here? Oh, yeah, um... Not too far that? from it. Was it a black-scaled one? Forgetting I believe it was a black-scaled dragon. Um, he, he kind of looks at the shard again, and it, and it it's a black glass one, and he says, well, there's no way to really prove it, but considering the fact that this is a a uh, black uh, dragon orb, could be that that was a dragon that was trapped within the dragon orb. He 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 kind of shrugs a bit and says, "I can't really say one way or another." Obviously, as I said. Wait. So, are you? Um, sorry. Are you saying that um, if the essence escapes, like the track, the dragon, like kind of takes form again? It's certainly a possibility, at the very least. If it was, like if it was broke, if it was broken from a case of divine intervention by uh, Takesis, and you know she wanted to give a body back to one of her chromatic dragons, could have been a thing. Again, this is all conjecture. I don't have any proper answers for you. Just saying that it's a possibility. Well, it's useless to us. It's useful to you. We found it. Do you have anything that could help us uh, deal with the dragon army or 
anything that'll make the journey easier, because we still got to get over to uh, that city and stop the army and all that. Uh, he thinks for a moment. And he says, um, how much free time do you have? How much do you need? <laughs> One second here. He says, well, I owed you a favor, as I said before. And if you give me this, I'll say that I owe you a good favor. You know, something a little bit taxing for me. And he uh, cracks his knuckles a bit and says, I can enchant one weapon for you. Make it a magic weapon and make it permanent. Hmm. Permanency is a tricky spell. Takes a bit of time. Mm hmm. Well, who, uh, who is it going to be? Well, you just picked up a dancing sword. Yep. You should yeah, no, be I... everything. Mm -hmm. Um. Actually, you know what he will actually say. No, wait. He he cannot do. He's got magic weapon, but he does not have enhanced armor or anything. Okay, so it does have to be a weapon. So. I feel like I feel like Jay was uh I feel like Buster was was cheated out of uh, a magic weapon. <laughs> Not really. It, it's just, you know, I work with pole arms and there aren't many magical pole arms. I mean, there could now be. There can be. Yeah, there can be. There now. could be. Uh Kilb's right. longbow could also be made magic. True. Yeah, and that has more utility, I would argue. He's happy to do whichever one you want. Well, uh, I, I would say, although, like, you're pretty much the only one that doesn't have, like, any sort of magic attack, no? Uh, yeah, I have zero magic. Right. I, I, I feel maybe that would be, like uh useful in that regard i don't know wait no i i i glow slightly in the dark i have one magic <laughs> <laughs> what do you guys think i think making either the bow or the mm -hmm. alarms yeah yeah definitely one of the two okay so we've narrowed it down to two and we need to pick one uh, I'll roll a d6 for it. Highest wins. Okay, you bet. Uh, Buster and Kilb, roll a d6. I was gonna suggest like ration eating contest, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, Buster, your <laughs> your glaive will get to be made into a plus one. <laughs> Excellent. You get a plus one glaive. And... That's going to take about 48 hours. Yeah. Also, Ola Gato and everybody hydrate, stretch, and do a posture check. Everyone hydrate, stretch, and posture check. Gato has arrived. <laughs> it's 
squeak the squeak chair. Okay, since we're waiting for the magic to get done, um, where is Derrett and our forces? Uh, you had left them back at uh, Hearts Hollow. Okay. Um... If I might put it out there since we now know where we have to go it might be time to get back with the army deploy some scouts and see what's what in that area I mean you are the scouts damn <laughs> <laughs> So, okay, we just need to scope out what's ahead of us without going in. Yeah, you can go ahead and scope out. Give everyone a long rest here. Because nothing exciting is going to happen by the time you get the, uh, the magic weapon done. And... When he finishes, he hands the weapon back to you, and he says, Uh, well, it's been real. It's been fun. You've certainly helped me out a fair bit. I look forward to hopefully seeing you all again. I need to return to the encampment to plan out what my next move is, now that I've gotten all the information on the sources of magic in the area. I wish you the best of luck finding the City of Lost Names. Are you sure? Are you not also uh, curious about this city? Who knows what it could hold that you would be able to investigate? Uh, I see what you're doing, and I admire you for it. But I was explicitly told to not help you in your s search when we first met, if you recall. I've skirted around it thus far by having you help me with something. But I do have to scarf her off. Unfortunately. Now this this is not quite the right size anymore. Uh there we go. Perfect. Um so yeah, Delamar is gonna take off and leave y'all. That's fair. And so if you want to, you can head straight to the City of Lost Names because you are still within range to um, Bargab and talk with, Dal with uh, Derek. Um, I'm assuming that you actually did tell them the location that you figured it was in. Yeah, while we were waiting. Okay, excellent. Did you want to head there right now? Or did you want to head back? What, what do you all want to do? Uh, I would like to know how to turn my glaive into a plus one glaive. Or if you have one that you can just throw in there. Um, you know, it's a very good question. Infused glaive. Make sure that this has been infused by an artificer. Close enough.
There you go. Alright, any thoughts, quibbles, concerns, conundrums? Or shall I just have you head on in? Let's go. All right, We're then. We're just scouting, right? We're not, not going in in. Yeah, you're scouting. OK. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's two days. Cool. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. OK. Allow me to. Get this. A vast plateau rises from the wastes. Its ancient cliffs soar hundreds of feet high. A broad canyon splits the plateau's face. Its passage is blocked by an ancient stone wall. Countless red tents spill from the canyon and its gate. Innumerable dragon army troops swarm the land while patrols of dragon elves soar above. The canyon that leads to the City of Lost Names is blocked by dragon army troops. Seems like they've got basically the whole army out here. Looks like we found him. You did, in Must fact, find him. Important here if uh, all these guys are here. Yeah, if if that's we're we're gonna need Derek. Yeah, I agree. the 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 army should at least be somewhere close by. We might need them to do, like, distracting maneuvers or something like that. Uh, is there any sign of a leader's tent or anything like that that we can see from where we are? Um, give me a perception check or an investigation check. Uh. Of course. Um, there's a lot of red uh, tents out there, and a lot of them clustered together. You can't tell if there's any designated uh, leader's tent or if there's, like, multiple leader's tents because this is, like, there are thousands of soldiers here. So the leaders might not even be there. Uh, but we do need to get into the city. Uh... You could do some reconnaissance if you want to, to get some more information. That sounds like a job for killed. Well, with my beast sense. I have to put my body on the line. This is true. <laughs> also, you know what I realized we didn't do? What? what? I didn't try to extract poison from the scorpions with my poisoner's kit. Oh, no. Oh, no. I even said, can't we get the glands? <laughs> yeah, I know. You, you said that, and I just did not think about it. I am so dumb. <laughs> Anyway, back to uh, Beast Sense. Up to an hour. I need to touch something. A willing beast. Mm. 
Is Landrin a willing beast? <laughs> <laughs> is Landrin a willing beast? Uh, you know, here's a good question too, actually. Um, wild shape. Ah! Okay, so, at 8th level, you can have wild shape with a flying speed. And y'all are supposed to be 8th le level by now. Are we? Yeah. yeah. So does that mean we get another level up right now? It does mean you get another level up right now. <laughs> oh no. But I mean, oh yeah. Oh yeah, but, oh dear. Hmm. So, at 8th level, everyone will obtain an ability score improvement. You can either put uh, 2 points into 1 stat, 1 point into 2 stats, or instead, you could choose to uh, take a feat. Hmm. And now I have to figure out another spell to have. Yes, but if you want to, if you want to, you can have those sorted out at your uh, during your downtime. This is a lot to look through right now. Yes, it is. Uh, and I will also actually say to everyone. Um, roll that. That's OK. The level that we reach in Shadow of the Dragon Queen is level 11. So you won't get another ability score improvement. Oh, right. Okay. Uh, with maybe the exception of Buster. Let me check that out. Eight, nine, ten, eleven. No. So, yeah, nobody gains any more ability score improvements. So... What most of you want to do is probably take a feat that will improve one of your stats to uh, an even number. Like, for example, Eggshell, you have a strength of 17, and that's the only odd-numbered one that you have. So it's... If you put uh, one point into strength... That's all you need to do, and that other point would be wasted on any of your other stats. So you might want to look into feats that improve strength by one. Mm-hmm. Okay. And uh, you could uh, choose those uh, in the downtime if you want to. Mm-hmm. What was that, uh, Buster? So it's like we upgrade one by two points or one by one point and get a feat or just a feat. OK, so how it works is you can put um, two points into one stat, one point into two stats or take a feat. Many of those feats will have increase one stat by one point, as an example. Uh, OK. Uh, Buster, actually, though, you might want to put your two points into strength because that will get you up to 20. You know? Yeah, I'll do that. Stripey, what have you got going for you? 
I'm trying to trying to look up. I'm gonna take a feat, but I have to look at a list. Absolutely not a problem. What I wanted to do. Do you remember how to unlock the thing to put in the points? You hold the control button and you scroll up. Oh. There you go. Yeah. Buster has 20 strength. Landrin, you probably want to put two points into wisdom because that affects your uh, your healing as well as your spellcasting modifiers, etc., etc. Kilb. What have we got going for Kilb? Kilb has Dexterity 17 and Con 13, so you would probably want to put uh, one into Dex, one into Con, because that would give you both an increase. Okay, I, I, I have 69 hit points. Nice, 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 nice. Thank you. <laughs> Dang. Mm. What you thinking there, Kilb? No, I was just reading through. I'm looking at the feats just to, to see if there's anything that I would get. Uh, uh, man, man, if I really was playing with poisons from the beginning, I could get Poisoner. Yeah. You know, we only take a bonus action to apply poison instead of a whole action. Yeah. You know, we get the proficiency in the poison kit I just picked up. Yeah. But also, you would actually benefit from putting two points, or rather one point into two stats. Because you have two odd-numbered stats currently. And what's so bad about odd-numbered stats? Uh, odd-numbered stats don't do anything for you. Because the bonuses are always on even numbers. Okay, I see what you're saying. So if you increase your dexterity by one and your constitution by one, uh, first things first, your constitution will actually update retroactively. So you'll gain more hit points than you normally would because your constitution modifier is added to every single level that you gained. And then your dexterity will be 18, so you have a plus 4 to attack rolls and plus 4 to damage with your uh, longbow. That would be my recommendation. Yeah, yeah, that sounds that sounds good. All right, then. I have adjusted your HP accordingly, Kilp. I am almost 69. You also gain land stride kill. What does this do? Oh, I see that. What does this do? Moving through non-magical difficult terrain costs you no extra movement. You can also pass through non-magical plants without being slowed by them and without taking da damage from them if they have thorns, spikes, or a similar hazard. And you would have advantage on saving throws against plants that are magically created or manipulated to impede movement, such as those uh, created by Entangle. Neat. Very neat. 
Oh yeah, when do we get to reset our spells? What do you mean by reset your spells? Like if I want to no longer use Long Strider, but use a second, uh, but use a different level one spell. Oh, uh, you are able to change your spells every level up. Okay. So you just leveled up twice, so you can forget one spell and learn a new spell. Uh, twice. Okay, I'm gonna. Because I've not really used Long Strider, so I was gonna look into seeing if I could replace that with another spell. Absolutely. Okay, so I'm thinking I might take a uh, heavy armor master. But I don't know if it's like kind of useless at this point. Let's have a look at heavy armor master. Your strength score increases by one while you are wearing heavy armor, bludgeoning, piercing and slashing damage that you take from non-magical attacks are reduced by three. I think that would work out just perfectly fine. You wear heavy armor. Mm hmm. That would increase your strength to 18. Right. Yeah. And, you know, there's plenty of people who don't use magical attacks. Yeah, that's the thing, right? It's, it's, it's just kind of uh, not really. Yeah. It's more for physical damage, but that's, mm -hmm. I think uh, I'll take that. Hmm? I was just going to say I can have a look at the uh, feats that would increase strength and give you any other options as well to consider. Mm -hmm. well, uh, athlete, maybe. I think I fucked up a bunch of shit. How so? <laughs> I added the wrong feet, and then I deleted it, and then I added the correct feet, but there's still a plus five to my initiative, and I don't know what else is possibly lurking behind the scenes. Uh, what feet did you try and take? Uh, well, I took alert first, and then I took athlete. So I want the alert stuff gone. Okay. Yeah, I've given you a negative five initiative, but. Yeah, pl plus four is where I should be. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. There's also Slasher. Pretty interesting. Slasher does seem pretty interesting. Mm hmm. Um, I will say to you, Stripey, uh, you have a climbing speed, so that means that athlete 
for you will only really give you standing from prone only takes five feet of movement and the increase of strength or dex. No, so maybe not. Uh, it, maybe. it is up to you. Uh, alert is a good feat for sure. Yeah, I'm, well, I mean, I like that it tips my decks over to a plus four. Mm -hmm. That part's nice. Um, but like if I can get more stuff out of alert, I guess that's a good thing. Uh, alternatively. Let's see. Guards have proficiency in light armor, so you could take uh, moderately armored to increase your dexterity and gain proficiency in the use of medium armor and shields. Ew. And then what does medium armor do to... Like, it has to have some kind of negative to it, right? Yeah, the negative to it is it only lets you have a plus two from your dexterity to add to your AC. But because you gain proficiency with shields, you can just ignore using moderate or medium armor and just have a shield in one hand and a rapier in another hand or your hand crossbow in another hand and... In my three hands. Well, I meant shield in one hand and whatever weapon you want in another hand. Okay. Because yeah, a shield I mean that, a shield is plus two AC. So if you wanted to have a shield. Yeah, I could get plus two and then also still have my decks, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah okay. All right. I, I like that. So I guess if it doesn't screw things up even more, uh, I'll switch to that one then. All righty then. Okay, Buster has been sorted out nicely. Eggshell, did you decide uh, which of those feats you were considering? Um, I was uh, I was kind of reading uh, online. Um, um man skill expert seems kind of good but i wouldn't know which one to uh you can't like you basically you you gain proficiency in, in an extra skill mm -hmm. and uh the skill you choose must be one that okay um and then i you think yeah. And then you also can gain expertise in a skill that you are proficient in. Mm-hmm. So the uh, expertise... Hmm. Honestly, I think I, I might just take the... Um... Ugh. Heavy Armor Master? Yeah, heavy armor master. That just seems more fitting for. Absolutely. All right, then. I'll just mark in your special defenses. Right. Um.
All right. Strength is bumped to 18. Your dex is 12. Constitution. Yes, everything is good here. And you have Inspiring Leader. Excellent. Excellent. Um, okay, and also eggshell, because of these level ups and things, you can have two more spells prepared. Oh. Oh, interesting, okay. Hmm. And three, your spell slots are correct. Excellent. Is anyone else still needing assistance? I think I got mine. Excellent. Oh, I think I'm going to take Dimension Door. Dimension Door is good. You've got your three can trips. And your current number of spells known is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Plus dimension door is eleven. Excellent. Stripey. There's a damage component. Oh, for Dimension Door. Yeah, if you try and Dimension Door into a place where you can't actually Dimension Door, you take 46 uh, damage. Oh, I take damage. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's that's don't do that. That's what I'm learning. Yeah, don't do that. It's probably good. Idea to don't do that. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, kill is set on spells prepared. All right, then. I think we're all good. Yeah. All righty, then. Now, then, I think that's probably a good spot to end it, because uh, there's a whole bunch of fun stuff going to happen next time. Yeah, sounds like it. And we definitely can't do it in 15 minutes. Mm-hmm. Alrighty, folks. Then I think that's going to be it for today. Let's go to the end slate. Let's stop Sirenscape and let's play the outro music. Big thank you to everyone who came around to watch the stream tonight. Big special thanks to my players today, naturally. Yeah. And 
super big thanks to the subscribers who are scrolling on screen. We couldn't do what we do without you all. Um, not going to do a raid this evening. No one's really doing much of anything at the moment. But I look forward to seeing you all next time. Thank you again and, uh, so much. We'll be on tomorrow was the uh, ending of those two point and click adventure games we started a couple weeks ago. Excellent. See y'all next time. Bye bye.